Hello, right, welcome. Welcome to um, uh, Life Hacked. Um, it's basically, I'm Joe Baines. I'm uh, effortless biohacking. And uh, I have here, do you want to introduce yourself? So my name is James Ainsworth. I'm a motivational speaker and I talk about focus because I believe that focus is probably one of the best things we can do because it allows you to concentrate on the things that you want and let go of things that you don't want. Alongside that, I do a bit of PT, nutrition, mindset, and uh, well, like probably like you, many, many different things, modalities and stuff. So yeah, that's me. Brilliant. And uh, so that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a biohacker and uh, I'm all into um, finding out like what effective things that useful and so what I'm here to do is pick his brains to find out what things he does that make him successful and before we do that I want to know how do you define success what is success to you success is the ability to do what you want when you want in the manner that you see fit now there's loads of people out there that see success as I've got to have a million pounds. I've got to have this um, million dollar company. I've got to have a family. But success, if I go a bit deeper into this, is where you get to connect to your own inner self, your own divine self, and it allows you then to come into alignment so that you know what you need to do and allows you to achieve this purpose in this life. Mm. And 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 um, how how is your life at the moment? You know, in terms of that, that success criteria. So, with regards to me at this moment in time, I'm pretty much obviously the whole of life's a journey. You know, whatever you say, the whole of life's a journey. I'm at the very beginning of my own speaking life and i'm at a point where i'm learning a lot of stuff but at the same time i'm also learning that the more stuff that we learn the more layers we are creating on ourselves and so it's kind of taken us away from our true self so i'm starting to perhaps not focus on doing this focus on doing that focus on doing that i'm bringing myself in, I'm centering myself on what I need to do in order to be the true, uh, my, my true self, when I'm at the true self, I'm optimized to the best I can be. My energy levels are flowing, I'm healthy, I'm vibrant, I wake up in the morning and go, ah, kind of thing, you know, happy kind of mindset kind of thing. Okay, and, and um, so, in terms of um, you know your um, your life, what what are the you, do you remember the pivotal point in your life where? Because I remember there's like four or five pivotal points in my life where it was like okay, that that's the path. You know this is this is an important pivotal point. Like 9/11 was for the uh, the Americans. You mm -hmm. know like it was a turning point. What are your pivotal points in your life? My the biggest pivotal point was actually a breakup five, six years ago. And that was the catalyst, which literally put me onto this journey. Before that, I was pretty much, I didn't really, I didn't really allow myself to get into spirituality. I was open to, I was open to new things, but it was, I was at a time where I would get depressed. I would feel anxious. I would, struggle to connect with people, I'd be shy, lack of confidence. And the breakup allowed me to, to think initially, because the initial idea after breakup is, when you break up with somebody, what's the first thing that you want to do? You want to get back, to, you want to uh, get together with somebody else, yeah. So on this, on this occasion, I wanted to get back with my ex-girlfriend. So I used the opportunity to grow, to build confidence, to build my self-esteem. But the more that I realise that, the more I realise I'm better off away from that because, and this allowed me then to start to do things like taking action. 
and there's quite a few things actually this this year and the end of last year have been some massive pivotal um occasions i just started i've just done a course on the warrior the king the magician and the lover which have built four male archetypes and it kind on one occasion on one of the sessions i'll t tell you this one little story there's times when i go uh, i used to go out i used to have a few drinks and when i had a few drinks i would get aggressive i would fight and what I realized working with this coach over the 12 weeks that I had been suppressing my warrior archetype. So when I'm sober, I was able to push this warrior side down and the warrior is all to do with anger. It's all to do with frustration. It's to do with that side of us that takes action, that wants, that has a passion, who has a purpose, that kind of thing. And what I realized was, when, I, when, when I'm sober, I can suppress this warrior. I can push him down. But when, I'm, when I drink, I can't. And all these archetypes want to be heard and felt. And so the warrior would literally come out with a vengeance when I've been drinking, because I could no longer control him. And uh, that was a huge eye-opening point for me, and it's helped me massively. And then obviously, about working with the lover, so opening up to grief, working with sadness. Um, there's also the magician, which is all to do with this, uh, to do with the inner self and fear. And then there was the king who brings them all together. He's kind of the guy at the top who then delves, uh, gives the others uh, a direction. And the king, when you've got the, when you've got the all four in sync, you start to become a bit, lot more of an in, in, integrated, integrated man, and yeah, that's massively helped. And there's other occasions, there's loads of different occasions. It's a, it's unreal. It is really unreal. So is, it, do, is there any kind of practices you do on a daily basis for this king warrior uh, to keep it in check or whatever it is? So the warrior, for me, that's all about allowing yourself to release things like anger and uh, anger in a healthy way so things like boxing uh, martial arts i use strength training running uh, anything physical um yeah there's quite a lot of ways you can release anger and working with the lover has allowed me to go to a much much deeper level with my own um emotions I haven't quite cracked being able to cry because I've been brought up on a farm. It was kind of it's kind of frowned upon to cry, I think. And so I struggle to cry, so there's still that to work through. But to do with the lover is all to do with accepting that we all have emotions and allowing ourselves to feel it. The magician, that's to do with delving a bit deeper into our own spiritual practices. You know, I'll just, I'll just, just quickly, just before this, I kind of realized that I was being triggered by somebody to do with my own seven year, seven year old self. So I allowed myself to go into a, uh, go and sit next to a tree and next, sitting next to this tree, I would just sit there and just have an internal conversation with my seven year old self, which I can do, I do internally. And I usually, I can see, I'm quite good at intuitive, so I can, I can see quite clearly. And I allowed him to just vent his emotions. And at the same time, I allowed him to get to the level where I could understand what was the main trigger. And it was down to not feeling that I wasn't loved and I wasn't accepted. And I just sat with him for a while, and eventually he came. He came across and said, "Okay, let's." He's come on board, so now it feels as though he's definitely there to uh, starting to feel a bit more loved. I think there's still a lot more work to do, but again, but this is what it's done. This warrior, magician, lover, and the warrior is that it's allowed me to delve a bit deeper into these parts of me. And do you have like a, a morning routine? 
what time do you wake up and what things do you do in the first couple of hours and why? So I've been big into morning routines for probably how many years? Seven, eight years? So obviously I've done everything from the miracle morning with um, just what's his name? Hello, Hell Elrod. I've done yeah, I've done lots of different things, but I've kind of chopped and changed. I used to do the uh, what's it meditation. Um, there used to be things like reading, journaling, bit of exercise. But I try not to make it too big because I was doing like an hour and a half, two hours every morning. So I've, I've, I had reduced them down, but again, if you're used to doing massive routines, suddenly you're not used to, you know, you take it down to like two or three things and it's very easy to add them on. So at the moment in time, I get up in the morning, perhaps around between five and six. That's because I want to get early. the earlier start, you get more stuff done and I'm a morning person myself. Um, then I do a bit of reading and have a coffee. Then I will do a bit of visualization, a bit of meditation. I've started to do again insanity. So I'll do a 30, 40 minute insanity session, which is obviously what's high intensity. What's an insanity session? So it's a high intensity interval training. So you'll do, you'll start off with a warm up, which is six sets of different exercises, three times around. Then you have to do a bit of stretching for like four to five minutes. Then you go into the big rounds where you do things like burpees, tuck jumps, and you're doing roughly about 30 seconds on, but you're doing four different exercises in a row. Then you have 30 seconds off, then you go back through it again, and so on and so on. You do it for like 30, 40 minutes. But I used to teach it as a class. Mm. That is pretty intense, yeah. I've done high, uh, uh, high intensity interval training as well. And it is, you, you can knack as you have really fast. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Especially when doing burpees. Yes, yeah, burpees. <laughs> I, I do the modified burpee, you know, where you do the press up and then you bring the leg in as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like I do 20 of those and I'm dead, basically. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that, yeah, so that, I love that. And and what about, do you have like a, a, a going to sleep routine? I chop and change with that now and again. Uh, actually, one thing I do want to quickly mention is that I also, in my morning routine, I will allow myself to call upon the angels. I, last couple of years, I've had allowed myself to believe that they're there and I feel their energy and stuff. I don't see them, but I can use the angels to help and assist me throughout the day. And uh, yeah, that's and, and, and how do you call the angels? Just say, um, Arch for example, if I, Archangel Michael, he's the one that can be used for protection. So when I leave my house, I ask for Archangel Michael to protect my house. And you know, they won't come to you unless they, you'd ask. Yeah. Okay. And and, and uh, so what I'm interested in now is, is is how have you optimized your life? What is it that allows you to be more productive? Okay. I've literally, I'm going to be pretty honest here. I've gone through a phase recently of. I think it's probably the last few months, last probably this year, I think I've been probably a little bit unconsistent. Um, mainly because I've had all these little niggles and stuff and uh, a few injuries and yeah. So I'm going through, I think I feel like I'm going through the next phase. I've got all this thing, it's quite not working. I'm trying to figure that one out, but if I want to focus, then I will... There's a guy called Dan Pani. So Dan Pani is a Buddhist monk. And I've done his course on focus. Now, he sees the mind as a fast space of many different areas. So everything you can think of has a different area. So sitting here now can have an area of a butterfly, area of, gra uh, area of grass, can have an area of a tree, area of happiness, area of joy, area of people, family, uh, everything you can think of has its own different area within your mind. And the awareness is like a ball of light which goes from one area to another area. Now, we are the only people ourselves that has the power to change 
where our focus and where our awareness is. And the more aware, the more aware that you become, the easier it is to realize where you are within your mind. So the other day, that meditation I did with you the other day, I allow myself to sit up in the first thing in the morning and just see where my mind is taking me. And quite often, I will see things like, I usually see words or pictures come into my head. And I'll see things like, I'm not, I am unworthy, I'm not good enough, I can't. But since doing that and working on my awareness and working on my mind, I've started to be able to change from I can't to I can. So suddenly, the action taken is starting to take place because my belief, my subconscious belief in the mind is that I can. And if you allow yourself to understand and to find out where you're, you are in your headspace in the mornings, you then have the power to move your awareness from an area that you don't want to an area that you do want. So I'll give you a great example. Perhaps in the morning, something's happened the day before, you're feeling angry. Now, you personally have the choice whether you stay angry or whether you move your awareness to another area. So you can move your awareness from the angry area of the mind to the peaceful area of the mind. Now, it might not sound very simple, but when you get into the habit of identifying where your awareness is and then moving your awareness, you'll see how easy it is to move your awareness from anger to happiness, to joy, to excitement. And the more that you do it and more that you practice, the easier it becomes. Yeah, and because you run the uh, workshop here, the uh, Focus Mind. Yeah. H yeah. How did that? Uh, how did that come in? How do you? Um, and, and what? What are the? What do you see in, in your students? Like that help the students in that. So obviously, I've run three workshops this week, and over the three over the three days, our three hour workshops, three and a half hour workshops. What I've noticed is, is that that meditation helped. Yeah, the minute, uh, and that helped because it allowed them to see where they were, but it also allowed them to give them, it gave them an example of how easy it is to move your awareness. And it's also, I think, empowering those people to understand that they have the power. Nobody else can tell them what, what to do or how to be. Only you can do that. And once you know you have the power, then you kind of realize then, yes, okay, I have the power to do this, I'm going to move my awareness from there to there. Uh, what else has happened? Yeah, I find that meditation very useful. Yeah. Because now I've started putting my awareness uh, at the back of my head, and I'm just looking out uh, through my um, third eye, mm -hmm. and it just sits there, and it's very quiet. It, um, actually, that's a good point, actually. Um, quite often, when we go throughout the day, I think I mentioned in the class, didn't I, about, um, so I have named my head and I've named my heart. My head is Bruno and he is a Rottweiler and he loves barking loads and loads and loads. He never, he never, he never quiet. But all Bruno, all Bruno wants, my head, is to be heard. If I allow Bruno to be heard, he starts quieting down. And at the same time, my intuition, Bertha, she is the one who can create and move me in a direction which I'm um, my purpose in life in this lifetime. So I will allow Bruno just to be heard. Okay, Bruno. Now, wait over there, and I'll allow Bruno, uh, sorry, Bertha, to help and assist me and to let me know, to help me to know where to go intuitively. And I think when people understood that, they kind of realise that they can, you know, they can uh, use their intuition and to quieten their head quite easily once they understand that. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I like that. Um, what do you? What if there was something that something that you could teach my readers now? What would it be? I mean, what would you teach them? Well. Again, it would probably be what we've just been chatting about, the mind. So, obviously, we've got, so we've got the fast space in many different areas. 
and the awareness which is before light which go from one area to another area. Now, when your awareness is in that area, that area will light up. You'll become conscious of that area. Now, if you can move your awareness to that kind of thing, it allows you to identify that you are not that emotion. We are, as, as human beings, we aren't this at that emotion. That emotion is in that uh, is in the different areas of the mind. So it's a good way of changing your awareness, thinking that I am this, to it's over there or it's it's here within our mind. So you don't, you aren't your emotion. It's just that your emotion is in that area of the mind, and it feels initially quite difficult but the more that you practice and become aware of where you are the easier it becomes and it's it's one of those things that before a workshop or before a talk I will pride myself because it's very easy to start to feel anxious and fearful of what people are going to be thinking but if you allow yourself to be primed and what I do for that is I put on some music, this is my way of doing it, put on some music, I will, kind of inspirational music, and I will picture myself in the state of mind that I want to be in for that, pres for that workshop or talk or whatever I'm doing, because then I can start to feel that emotion internally, and I start to become it. Okay, and, and if, if you were, like, you know, imagine you could um, pass on three ideas or or skills or whatever it is to your younger self, like 20 years old, what information would you want to get across to them? Like imagine you could pass back in time some something to your 20 year old self, what would it be? Um, this is, it's, people have asked me this question quite a few times. Yeah. And I always give them the same answer. I wouldn't give my 20 year old self any information because at that point in time, I wasn't ready. Yeah. I would I probably would have said oh, and probably forgotten it and nothing nothing about it. At that point in time, I wasn't ready to well I wouldn't be ready to accept any of that because I was very naive, I was shy, I was uh, not very outgoing. But I lacked confidence at that at 20. You know, I was terrible with the women at that point in time. And so I kind of, if I was to go back in time and give information James, that 20 year old James probably would say, but probably shy away. He probably wouldn't even acknowledge it mm. for, that, for, that, for that same reason. Whereas now, I'm a completely different person. Yeah. Yeah, so like, like for example, for me, um, uh, one of the biggest turning points was uh, going and doing like um, these seminars, you know, like um, uh, Tony Robbins. Yeah. or uh, MMI, as soon as I did those seminars, it just totally transformed my life. Mm -hmm. And I was like, because up to that point, I've always been going, no, they're too expensive, they're charlatans, they're, uh, you know, like, they're just, they're just there to rip me off. I mean, what, what changes can they make in two or, two or three days time? And they're, they're expensive as well. Yeah. So yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. and, but they do, they work, they, they make the changes. So I was like, man, if I'd learned, if I'd gone to that seminar, 10 years earlier, look where I'd be. And the other thing I've discovered for me is yoga. Mm -hmm. Like I've only discovered yoga four years ago. Before that, I thought it was just some sort of exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yoga is like many times more. And I'm like, damn, why didn't I discover yoga 10, 20 years ago? Look where I'd be now. But but you're right. My younger self wouldn't be ready. No. Do you know, it wouldn't yeah. have been ready. It wouldn't have, it could have gone to that seminar. I could have forced it to go. But it wouldn't have gotten the same benefits I got it from it because it wasn't ready. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So, yeah, so that, that, yeah, so definitely. So, yeah, what would you change? Damn, yeah, that's uh, like nothing. Because nothing. Yeah, yeah. you are now because of those mistakes, because, because of those mm. uh, things going wrong, you are now who you are. But, and if you change those, you change this person here. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it's a feedback loop. So, well, if you, if you think as well, um, how you identified back then. And 
you you have the choice as well now at how you, how you want to identify perhaps in a year's time so if you wanted to be this person this real super super confident person who goes and chats to anybody who is the outgoing who has, has an amazing job has the confidence to do whatever he wants is guided internally you might not be it now but if you start acting it now creating that new identity now by the time perhaps six months time you're already partly partly there and so you know you and then suddenly one day you realize that that new identity that, that year ago that you wanted to become I am now that so it's about who do you want to be who do you want to be in this world in this lifetime what do you want what do you want us to do and don't get me wrong things change but if you have that kind of direction that kind of endish goal if you get lost then you can bring yourself back but if you don't know what you want to do you go in this direction you go in this direction go in this direction and you, you haven't really progressed very far whereas yeah you have a kind of uh, a target you want to aim for you've got that you can get back onto the track dead dead easy mm. definitely uh, I, uh, yeah i mean that, that makes sense that makes sense in terms of like um i was thinking about my own life um yeah i mean it, it, what do you want to pass on? like imagine you know you're going to have kids in the future what would you like to pass on to you? What, how would you bring them up, you know, in terms of uh, like what life lessons would you want them to get, you know? Well, I probably wouldn't uh, bring them up the way you were brought up. I were brought up. And now at this point, I'm not in any way blaming my parents because that would be giving my power away. But they, they did the best that they could with, with the tools yeah, with that the they had. They had and I was brought on a, a farming background. Uh, they had very little money, and I—I I mean, I was a, I was born first, so it was all an experiment at that point. Whereas now, I would bring them up how I am now. So, it, well, how I am at that moment in time when I have kids. So about accepting emotion, about being able to connect to themselves, to watch the words that I use around them because words can have a massive impact on how we are um, helping them to to navigate their life but not in a way that you have to do this you have to do that and I definitely get them to learn how to focus with all the distractions in the world for sure social media right yeah social media yeah. if you think I'm 37 when I was born, for the first for five, five to ten years, we had Sega Mega Drives, we had black and white TVs, small boxes like that, phones which you used to dial, dial number. You had. Um, I was in the country, so I lived on farm, kind of running on fields, building dens. Whereas now, we've got we can have calls over the world. My sister lives in New Zealand. She can have a conversation on whatsapp video and chat you have all these different technologies that are, uh, that are really progressing some of them good some of them bad but yeah it's this world now is full of distraction and we get it's very easy for us to get distracted in this lifetime and to not be able to be focused which is actually it's actually an art focusing is an art it's a, it's a skill that we need to learn because we were never taught how to concentrate or how to build willpower in schools. Yet, if you could allow your kids to learn how to concentrate and uh, focus, then they can be more in, they be more present in schools, and at the same time, they can be more present in present and uh, in what they want to do. Mm. Well, one of the most powerful things I've uh, ever been to is vipassana. So I would encourage my kids to go and do vipassana in fact i would encourage them to do it like on a regular basis yeah because to meditate 12 hours a day 10 days you know it's it's like 
bodybuilding, you know, for the brain. Yeah. So that's like heavy lifting stuff. And I noticed as soon as I started being able to do that, I, it's, it just changed my life. Like my mind, I can stop my mind. I can, con- you know, like the yeah. level yeah, yeah, of control. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. I don't think having fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Having fun is a yeah, key thing. Yeah, that's right. Not giving a shit yeah. what other people think. That's like the hardest. That's very that's very hard to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I run confidence coaching workshops. And one of the things that the natural outbreak uh, of at the end of that is that you learn, you, your subconscious mind learns not to give a shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And as soon as your subconscious mind doesn't give a shit, you don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's at that level um, that I work. And yeah, the results are insane. Suddenly you don't care. You don't know why, but you just don't get care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, it's, uh, oh, if you think last, uh, we're at a festival now. Last night I dressed as a woman, just for the hell of it, and you know it gives you that that kind of thing where you don't care, but it's good because quite often we get we get stuck in our heads. Mm. Well, how are we, how are people thinking? You know what they're going to think about me, and you get caught up, and you it's when you get that fear, that anxiety, that um, lack of confidence. When you learn not to care what people think, suddenly there's a new sense of power. Yeah. You do stuff which you wouldn't normally do. You, you push yourself to go and do uncomfortable things. You will go and chat to a complete stranger. You, you will wear makeup in public kind of thing. I'm not saying that's what everybody wants to do. Uh, it is quite liberating now and again. But yeah, it's, um, it's an art, but it's a good art. I, I, from, I, I used to be an introvert, massive introvert, like no social skills whatsoever. Like I'd, if I was around people, I'd have to go and hide away every 10, 15 minutes and recharge. Yeah. And I gave myself uh, a training by myself where I had to go and talk to 100 to 400 people every single day for six months. It was insane. Like, how, many, how many? Hundreds? 100 to 400 people. Sometimes 500 every people. Every single day. Right. It was it was insane. Like I had so much anxiety. Like, I didn't want to get up the, out of bed in the morning. Because if I, when I got out of bed, I knew what I was going to go and do. And so it would take me several hours to work up the courage and the, 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 the willpower to get out of bed. Mm-hmm. Because I knew as soon as I stepped out of that bed, uh, sometimes the only thing that would step make make me step out of that bed was if I needed to go for a pee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. And I mean, it was insane. Like I would, um, like I'd be going on a train, and I would purposely go on a train, and my goal on that train, like it's a train going from London to Liverpool, my goal is to talk to every single person on that train. That's cool. Uh, right. I and like then, that. and then, if I got to the other end of the train. I'd start on one side, get to the other end, <laughs> and the train still had got to Liverpool. I'd go back and talk to them all again. <laughs> I got reported to the police. <laughs> <laughs> what did the police say? The police was uh, like, uh, I, I, there was this one guy, I can't remember who it was, but I, I pissed the conductor off. He was like, What are you doing? Sit down and be quiet, you know? Like, And I was like, Hey, man, I'm just you know, doing my thing. And, but this guy, there was an old guy on there, and he was pissed off with me that I went and talked to him. So he reported me to the police. And uh, so when I got to the other side and got to Liverpool, um, I ca- came off. There was a, a several policemen waiting for me. <laughs> and I explained to them what I do. And they were, all right, OK, well, that makes fair enough. And they went, you, you. so I chatted to them for about half an hour. Uh, but the results were insane. Like, I used to take the train to Brighton because I used to run a comedy club there. And uh, it, going to Brian, I would talk to every single person on that train. And then on the, on, on, on the, the way back as well. It was just like, and people would be holding two fingers at me, tell me to F off, like all kinds. Of <laughs> 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 because they're like, what, what, why would you be talking? You know, like, it's just yeah, insane, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and, I used to, and I used to live on the Jubilee line at Canada Water Tube Station. And I would, every morning, I would get on the Jubilee line, and my goal was to talk to every single person on the train before, and by the time the train got to Oxford Street or wherever it was. Yeah, yeah. And so I would use, uh, between each station, I would do a whole carriage. I'm, you know, it was just like insane. Like, 
Like, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and I also do chin ups on the tube and press ups, and it just totally changed me. But it was hard as hell. Do you know, like, because it's just yeah. me by myself, there's nobody else there. That's an, in, in itself, that is a hell of a uh, thing to be able to do because people, I think people quite often uh, have lost the ability to communicate with complete strangers. Yeah. You see people in restaurants, with partners and on dates and stuff, and they're, they're on their mobile phones all the time, but they, they can't be able to, people struggle to communicate because they're not really taught how to communicate. And schools do in some respects as kids, but when you, um, to get you wrong, we have people who are introverts and don't like talking. But sometimes we have to do things that we don't like yeah. and make us uncomfortable. And the only way of overcoming that fear is to feel the fear feel and the do it anyway. anyway. Yeah. There's a yeah. speaker, a motivational speaker that I was uh, interviewing and I did interview. And he found he's an introvert. And his time on the train, actually, was his time to wind down and recharge. But obviously, having a full day of interacting with people literally wiped him out. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I, I was exactly like that. As soon as I was around people, I needed to get away. And so I'd always be trying to get away from people, looking for, a, like, a, a, a rock to crawl under to recharge. <laughs> and I didn't want to be that. It, I was, like, so annoyed with myself that, you know, I had to do that and other people didn't. I did this training on myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I am an extrovert. I naturally gravitate towards people. I recharge when I'm with people. Uh, but I can do both. You know, I can yeah, go and yeah, sit yeah. in a corner. Um, so, like, so I completely. But it was the hardest thing in the world. You know, like, it was like climbing Mount Everest backwards or something. Well, there's um, a thing that I do now, which yeah. I, if I go into a. Uh, place which got quite crowded or busy I will ask myself who do I need to speak to and naturally you will be drawn to a, per a person and I'll just I'll go and chat to that person mm. or I would I would do it at that point in time perhaps it's not, perhaps it's not uh, ideal at that moment in time but then what I've noticed is, is that I tend to gravitate to that person anyway or that person comes and chats to me mm. And you know, it's they might be there for a reason, they might not, but you know, it's, it's like being able to pick that one person because doing a hundred people in a day, 100 to 400, is quite a challenge. And uh, and it was just to get me out of my shell, yeah, that was it. But if you just, just do one, even that's what that's you need to do, make it that simple and that small rather than aiming to do a hundred people, aim for that one person. And that's what we should be talking about the other day, weren't we? Yeah. That's right, yeah, micro uh, micro habits, yeah. So, so you, you, you mentioned you're uh, uh, building yourself up to be a speaker. Uh, what, what's, um, um, do you want to talk me through that journey? How are you, uh, what are you doing? How are you implementing it? Yeah, okay, so public speaking used to be one of my biggest fears. I think because of what happened at school and due to drawing a play. So it's always been one of my biggest fears. Whenever we were, um, I was at university and had to do a presentation, I would be uh, shitting my pants, literally. And um, since when I finished the breakup, the bad breakup, one of the things I wanted to do was to conquer my fear of public speaking. So I kind of found a group. This is where you go into micro goals, uh, small, small steps, tiny goals. So I found using an opportunity to find a place I can go and speak at, which is Toastmasters. I then went and did a, went to an evening, enjoyed it, did my first speech where literally I was like that, and my I was going, oh, 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 kind of thing. And um, it was from there that I did the next speech, next speech, next speech, and I kind of realized I quite enjoy doing that. Uh, and so I started setting up my own little workshops, initially in the local area, and it just built, built, built up. And I've had four paid gigs to date. And obviously I now need to um, be marketing and doing things like that for my next speech. But at the moment I'm doing a lot of work for businesses. But I think in the long term, I'm gonna be helping people in general, general people, like, you know, big audiences where people, 
anybody can come to any of, my sh any of the shows or workshops uh, rather than just aiming at businesses. Mm. From, uh, yeah, sorry, I was, I, I'm also a member of Toastmasters as well, and I went through the same thing. Um, I, 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 I joined three Toastmasters clubs because I wanted to perform that many times in front of, because I was like so scared. And I remember I used to get physical symptoms going on my way to Toastmasters, like leaving work, go to Toastmasters, my knees would start hurting, my feet would start hurting, I'd get pains in my back and my shoulders, I'd get headaches. But as soon as I'm there, they'd all disappear. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I had physical, and with the, my, my body physically just wanted to go. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, and I remember my first time I went up to speak, I forgot everything. I even forgot my name, and I'm standing up there like in a daze. Yeah. My oh, heart rate's oh going man. through nuts. Oh, yeah. And then I sort of, at some point, I'm just quiet I'm, because I can't remember anything. My brain just, I think, pulled the plug and went to sleep, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then, but I eventually I remembered my name. I said my name and sat down, and that was it. And the uh, the timer came up after, and goes, oh, Joe Baines, um, 30 seconds. <laughs> That's like it. What the hell, right? So I just kept going, and then eventually I found myself being able to think on stage. Well, it's that's like impromptu um, speaking, isn't it? Sorry, the impromptu speaking. Yeah, it was impromptu. Yeah. But all I managed to do on the first time was say my name and get sit down again <laughs> when they announced me. So. Well, that's um, actually while you were saying that, actually, you know, when you said you had to go and speak to 100 to 400 people, and you had, couldn't get up in the morning, and you mentioned about going in a car, that would be. The perfect especially now that would be the per perfect opportunity to prime yourself so if you were aware that you had them feelings so then to move your uh, focus away from that feeling to how you want to feel when you are in front of that audience or you are chatting to that person so whether that's excited whether that's uh, inspired happy um, any emotion that you want to feel in that moment in time and that's uh, and that, as you more identify it, and the occasions more and more, you can then get into the habit of being in that state of mind more often without even having to move your awareness. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for that. Now, do you want to let um, them know how they can find you, how they can connect with you? So at this moment in time, my I'm, I'm on Facebook and it's under James Ainsworth. At the same time, I'm also I've got my own website, which is James Ainsworth Motivational Speaker. And all my contact details are on there. Where else can you get me? I'm, I'll be on LinkedIn as James Ainsworth. I'll put all the links below, so you, you've got access. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I think that's all. I don't yeah. really use my Instagram anymore, so yeah. Cool, all right, well, thank you very much. Uh, I will, uh, I'll push this out at some point. Um, once we're back online uh, yeah thank you this just it's been amazing this guy's awesome I went to his uh, focus uh, workshop really good and I'm, I'm I do it all the time I was doing it here as well where I was like um, I'm not consciously being able to, you know focusing and putting my attention where I want it to go mm -hmm. so that's really good thank you very much uh, if, thank you uh, any, much. so when you want to connect with this guy just see the links below and uh, just just message him and you'll, you'll be more than happy to Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy.